Let's face it, there's a lot you don't know about sickle cell disease. Like that it affects almost all races. Like that it affects millions. That it can be unbearable. That it's the most common genetic blood disease in the country. But awareness and understanding are still far too uncommon. Let's face it, there's a lot you don't know about sickle cell disease. And that's a disease too. Call the 211 info line to learn more. Welcome to another episode of Face Sickle Cell. We welcome your, your interest in this particular episode. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, my name is Virginia Pertiller. I serve as Executive Director for Citizens for Quality Sickle Cell Care. We're located in New Britain, Connecticut and Hartford, Connecticut. Today I have a phenomenal young man with me today as a guest. Uh, we've gotten to know each other over the last few years and, um, and I think you're going to be very impressed uh, with his interview today. So I just ask that you uh, sit tight and enjoy the face of sickle cell today. So his name is Hertz Nazir. And, um, he has a lot to share this morning. We're going to start off talking about the history of sickle cell because I think that many people do not know the history of sickle cell disease and how long it's been in the United States as discovered in the United States of America. So let me welcome today Hertz Nazir. Hi. Hi. Um, it's like I've been trying to prepare for the interview and trying to understand sickle cell because it's like I live with this disease and I understand it's like um, 2010 was like the 100th, 100th anniversary of the discovery of sickle cell. It was so interesting that 1910, mm -hmm. such a, it seems like ages ago, mm -hmm. but um, it was discovered and not in Africa, mm -hmm. not in India, not anywhere else, but in Chicago, a young man from the island of Grenada mm -hmm. went to Chicago to be a student. He was a dental student. Mm -hmm. His name was Walter Clemens uh, Noel. So he started having some kind of effects of sickle cell pain. Basically, he went to a doctor, and um, the doctor was a Card cardiologist wasn't particularly interested from what the young man was explaining that he was feeling this kind of pain. Mm -hmm. So he was referred to a resident and the resident um, basically looked into a microscope from the blood slide and saw these sickle shapes. Mm -hmm. So the first doctors finally got really, really interested mm -hmm. in what's going on because this was a new discovery, a new, new disease. Mm -hmm. And when you write a paper about something, your name gets remembered mm. as the one who discovered sickle cell. Yes. So when I look back at you know my notes, and I know that Walter Clemens went to this doctor, and you have you know you have different different things that happens. So the doctor's name, when he wrote his paper, was Dr. James B. Herrick. Mm -hmm. And the referring doctor, the resident, was Dr. Um, Irons. And basically, Knowles, being from the island of Caribbean, mm -hmm. was very interesting for me because I was born in Haiti, mm -hmm. not so far away from Grenada. Mm -hmm. And it's like the history of sickle cell going back, it's coming from the slave trade bringing over slaves from Africa. Mm -hmm. And we have these places where malaria was prevalent mm -hmm. in Africa. So the slaves that were more healthy, more hardy, mm -hmm. survived these l imprisonment, mm -hmm. capture. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you're in a damp dungeon like place when you're waiting for a ship to come mm -hmm. and trade for slaves yeah. and things like that. So these people were getting sick left mm -hmm. and right. Mm -hmm. And some of the more hardy people were people with sickle cell trait, where they had a very good resistance towards mm -hmm. malaria. Mm -hmm. Malaria was a very big killer back then. Mm -hmm. And th this was all 
and the genetics, not the nature of what sickle cell is, but the trait was the thing that caused a lot of, you were the strongest there, you were the strongest, the healthiest there. Mm -hmm. So you survived to make it to the new world, to make it to these islands, mm -hmm. to make it to North America. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you were in bondage, you were a slave, and this is just like, it's like the history of it is so fascinating. But sickle cell, from 1910, you got 1920, where they, tr they started to understand that sickle cell had this, um, you know, gen genetic, um, you can inherit it. So it's like, you know, it's, you have 1920, then you have um, 1949, where they discovered some aspects of hemoglobin. They started mm -hmm. to know that the chemical nature of the, the, the hemoglobin. I mean, that's, those are discoveries that were 1949. Then you have 1965, um, when, you know, you start, learning about um, what chemical makeup of the hemoglobin is actually mm -hmm. the, the amino acids that were substituted from a normal cell, which is glutomic acid, mm -hmm. which is something that um, if you don't have sickle cell, that's what's supposed to be inside your hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. But valine is the substitute. If I have sickle cell, I have valine, mm -hmm. which is different. So the hemoglobin, all it's supposed to be doing is that throughout history, when they study all these things in science, it's like, it's not so long ago that they, they understood these things. So when I look at myself and I realize that, I look at the research and I realize that there's nothing mysterious about it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing demonic about it because I'm from Haiti. Mm -hmm. And when I was born with sickle cell, people thought, you know, it was a voodoo curse or something mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. it's like, um, there was a lot of misconception of illness and putting superstition into it. But when you look at the science and you look at what nature is doing, actually doing, there's nothing really negative. There's no curse. There's no bad thing about it. It's just that that's nature. That's what it's supposed to do. So just changing the DNA and changing the message, mm -hmm. it tells the hemoglobin no longer to just bounce around, but actually hold hands and mm -hmm. form these polymers and structures inside the blood cell. Mm -hmm. The blood cell's job is all, all it is, it's to circulate oxygen to your tissues. Mm -hmm. The heart's purpose is to circulate your blood. Mm -hmm. When I breathe in, I'm taking in this life-breathing oxygen mm -hmm. to give to my blood. Mm -hmm. My blood transports it and takes it to every single location in my body. Mm -hmm. My brain needs oxygen. Mm -hmm. My toes need oxygen. Mm -hmm. So there's like, you know, all these areas where you need this to survive. Mm -hmm. But with the hemoglobin, which is the actual uh, substance that is red in your blood, it's the thing that actually carries the oxygen. So with sickle cell, uh, as soon as they de they release their oxygen mm -hmm. to the tissue. The valine in, inside the hemoglobin is telling the hemoglobin, instead of just bouncing around and waiting for the next time they get oxygen again, to hold hands instead. Mm -hmm. You know, they turn into these polymers, they, these rigid structures that they turn this soft, round-shaped blood cell into abnormal shapes. Mm -hmm. Like a, one of the common shapes is sickle. Mm -hmm. sickle shape it's like a C a half moon sh crescent shape so that's the that's why the sickle cell had got that name when they in 1910 that's when the doctors just say oh this look like a sickle so that's what that's what that, the name stuck mm -hmm. from that so all the negativity you can look at and I'm looking at my hemoglobin and I'm like you know I'm no longer going to reject my DNA, my DNA leaves me my eye color, you know, my yes. hair color, mm -hmm. my skin color. Mm -hmm. Everything about me is that nature's code. So feeling bad, feeling negative about having sickle cell is like detrimental to me. Mm -hmm. I've had a period in my life where depression was a huge thing and it still is because when you deal with pain constantly, every time you have a pain episode, you're thinking that, wow, why am I going through this hardship, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. why people do not understand my pain, mm -hmm. you know, 
And it's like, we don't see the opportunities in life, the opportunities to grow stronger, the opportunities to become a better person. Mm -hmm. We don't see these things when we are feeling pain, when we're feeling hardship. It's like every mountain, there's a new mountain to climb yes. after it, after you climb one mountain. It's like in my country, we have this saying like, uh, after every mountain, there's more mountains, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just that it it's always seems endless, like an endless journey of struggle, mm -hmm. endless journey of pain and hardship. So I use my painting as some outlet where I put all my energy, my negative energy into painting about pain. So I usually call myself a painter. Mm -hmm. I paint about pain where it's just things that affect people, injustice in life. Mm -hmm. Not just sickle cell pain, but injustice I see around my world, mm -hmm. my society, the hardships I see other people go through. Mm -hmm. You know, the inequality between men and women and inequality between black and white or other cultures versus another uh, other culture. Mm -hmm. So I try to broaden my approach where it's like from struggling with pain, I, I take the opportunity to learn how to feel compassionate mm -hmm. about my world, to feel compassion, because that's what I'm seeking when I go to the ER and I'm sick, I'm, I'm in a pain crisis and my pain is not believed. Mm -hmm. I get to a place where they think that because of where I'm coming from or my skin color is that I'm lying about my pain. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because in history, when I look back, there's this slave owners used to write down meticulous detail about records about their slaves, mm -hmm. the slaves they own. Mm -hmm. And one of the words that they would write down is malingering. Mm -hmm. The word malinger means a person who is faking illness in order to avoid work. So the thing is that I go to the hospital seeking medical attention. Mm -hmm. At one point, there was one particular event that happened to me that really totally made me go out there and educate about sickle cell was that I went in wearing a t-shirt, called an ambulance, I was in crisis. And that's all I was sleeping in, a t-shirt and just, you know, nothing much. And I go into the ER, they, I, I haven't been sleeping well because of the pain. And mm -hmm. it's like, as soon as they gave me some medication, I, I went to sleep. And I woke up with them discharging me, giving me just a few pills and saying, you don't longer have pain, you can leave. It's like, it's, oh it was such devastating thing because I was still in really strong pain. It's like, with sickle cell, usually they ask you about the pain scale. What is your level of your pain from mm -hmm. one to 10? Mm -hmm. So usually it's like, if I'm going to the hospital, I have to make sure that it's very, very strong pain because I have to deal with certain stigmas, certain attitudes mm -hmm. towards me mm -hmm. that I may come there just to drug seek, mm -hmm. just for the high of it. And it's, 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 it's something that's, affect your mind, your way of viewing the world and seeing that there are callous people in this world that really do not care. They are cold hearted and they are just human beings. I see. So just a final question. I just want you to touch on one thing that you mentioned and that was the slaves who were strong enough to, mm -hmm. you know, go through that whole process. Mm -hmm. Today, we know that those of us who might have the sickle cell trait don't have to worry about go, when we go to Africa. Uh, you know, they usually have you take the quinine and, uh, for protection. But for those of us who do have the trait, uh, there is this thing where we don't need to do that. Well, the thing about that is that it, this is how nature works. The sickle cell came from that um, mutation where it gives you this ability for to have sickle cell trait, where it, it has gives you some protection from malaria. So you you survive malaria if you have sickle cell trait. Okay. But the effect is people with sickle cell disease SS like myself, I don't have that protection. Okay. So I have to be doubly careful if I'm traveling to Africa or, or I'm traveling to 
moved to a part of the world where mm -hmm. there's malaria prevalent. Mm -hmm. Just a mosquito bite could give me a very, very hard time because I already have sickle cell, so my immune system is already detriment in a detrimental state. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having sickle cell d disease does not protect me. Okay. Well, let's, let's come back to this. Um, I do hope that uh, we can go into a little bit more about sickle cell and you personally when we go into the next segment. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you uh, for this part of it. This has been very uh, informative. So as we uh, continue to have discussion, we ask that you please stay with us. Uh, today you are uh, witnessing an interview with Hertz Nazair and Virginia Pertiller. We'll be right back. segment of face sickle cell disease. Uh, today we are interviewing Hertz Nazir and uh, if you missed the first segment uh, you're still in for a great treat for the next uh, segment as we begin to discuss what Hertz does in the greater uh, Hartford state of Connecticut. Uh, he's all over the place so we want to hear some of the impact that he has had on the community relating to sickle cell disease. Hertz, welcome back. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the thing about me that most people know in the sickle cell community is that I created three paintings about my pain. It was a very personal images because uh, one time that I, w I got sick and um, basically they, they released me before my pain was even properly treat treated. So I went home and it was night and I couldn't sleep and I was feeling pain and I just decided just to put that to paint, put that to canvas. So I used some oil pastels on blackboard and I just painted what my face looked like with a level 10 paint. So I call it, I call the piece 10 redefined. Then I, 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 I wanted to show how I'm drowning in this, this, this pain and this, the cells I felt like hopeless, mm -hmm. you know. Then I drew a hand just bursting through the, 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 the cells and reaching for a normal cell for a cure. Mm -hmm. I call that painting Hope. Mm -hmm. And a year later in um, the Bronx, because I was homeless at the time, a friend of mine allowed me to stay with him and his family in the Bronx. And I created a painting called need not suffer alone. You don't mm -hmm. have to suffer this pain alone. Mm -hmm. So it's just basic. And these images, because they were so much personal, so much about my own personal pain, they started being circulated and being used for education and awareness about sickle cell. So in medical books and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then um, from people hearing me speak about my pain, my 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 ability to understand what is lacking mm -hmm. of compassion mm -hmm. in our community and the medical field that they, I started getting in, invited to speak mm -hmm. and one of the places I, I got invited to which I'm very fortunate to is um, just to sit down with medical students at Yukon Medical Center where mm -hmm. the, the students are you know just studying medicine mm -hmm. and you know one of the doctors there just invited me just to sit down for an hour just to have a private conversation with mm -hmm. the students what it would be like to meet someone with sickle cell I just I would explain to them you know this is what you 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 you're going to see mm -hmm. in a medical place where on a floor or at the ER mm -hmm. a person may have a lot of pain and they may not be able to communicate certain things to you. Mm -hmm. But here I am, a normal human being, mm -hmm. and I'm not feeling pain right now. And I want to share with you what sickle cell feels like, mm -hmm. what sickle cell does to us as a community, and the stigmas that are associated with it, and the community where I'm coming from. I may be homeless, I may not have a job, mm -hmm. there might be some 
if I have a home, I might have some problems at home with family members. We have mm -hmm. the same kind of problems anyone else would have. Mm -hmm. Because the world is already hard enough if you don't even have any kind of disease or, or hardships. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to explain to medical doctors to look at, at us as human beings, to look at us with dignity, to look at us with um, that whatever we're suffering is valid. You know, it's a, we're not faking our pain. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not coming there to get a high or anything like that. Mm -hmm just to show them, present them with a, another human being, mm -hmm. present them with a, a, a person that they can say, this is actual person. So I set myself as an example where I share with them very personal things about mm -hmm. my life so that they can actually look at a person who's in pain yes. with a little bit more dignity, mm -hmm. with a little bit more compassion. And if they remember my story, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they will take that pain a little bit more seriously. Yes. So as a young man, younger, when you were younger, mm -hmm. what were some of the experiences that you, uh, that you had uh, living with sickle cell disease? Well, it's like, when I was in Haiti, uh, my mom left when I was like a toddler mm -hmm. to come to America to work mm -hmm. and left me with different families. I would be bounced around because I was a sick child. Mm -hmm. Because at six months old, they already knew I had sickle cell mm -hmm. you know, anemia. Mm -hmm. In Haiti, it's called anemia falciform. So I already knew exactly how to say it in my own language, mm -hmm. Creole. So I already understood that I'm sick. So things were like, I was a very quiet child. Mm -hmm. So I would look at colors, a very colorful place in Haiti. There were, you know, trucks, like taxis were painted, they were colorful. Mm -hmm. So they were, they called them tap tops and they had very beautiful paintings on them. Mm -hmm. And that just drew me to art. That just drew, drew me to, um, anytime I wanted to express my pain, I would just draw something, mm -hmm. you know? So when I, I came to America and I learned English and I understood that Language was just a powerful thing. I fell in love with learning languages mm -hmm. and I fell in love with just creating more art and just gave my mother a lot of presents from just painting things for her because mm -hmm. she was like the only one there for me mm -hmm. with my pain. So mm -hmm. the thing about my life is just like the reason I'm an artist today is because the pain drove me to express just my own humanity, just my own understanding of what I'm suffering, just mm -hmm. wanting the world to understand that my life is valid. Mm -hmm. Just because I have sickle cell doesn't mean, you know, I'm not a normal human being mm -hmm. that oh, I don't deserve to live this life. Absolutely. You know, so there are people out there who, who just made me feel so bad, mm -hmm. you know, that I was different, made you feel so weak, you mm -hmm. know, or, or undeserving. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that if you have sickle cell and you're struggling with this pain, do not allow people to put you down. Do not allow people to, to drag you down mm -hmm. and dra drag your spirit and destroy yourself or poison your soul mm -hmm. because they're saying so many things that are so bad, so negative. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I w always had to fight, you know, just to for my own happiness because I had to fight through a lot of different hardships, a lot of different things as a young man, because I lost my mom when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, doctors would say um, to my mother that I would not live to see 18. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I would lose my mother. I thought she was worried about losing me, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sitting in the back of the seat driving to go school shopping on an August day. And on the Merritt Parkway in Connecticut, and we, we hit a, a small tree on the side, and my mom was gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching my mom gone. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I, I was nearly 14. I was almost 14, you know? And I was like, it was devastating to me because that was your only source of, you know, empowerment mm -hmm. because she really tried to help me. She was there, there for me. But having to deal with sickle cell alone, going to, a, a, a new family member or a guardian that did not understand sickle cell, that did not realize you had true pain mm -hmm. or things like that really affected me in a way that I internalized a lot of things and I became 
a person who wanted to just express that my pain is just part of my life but there's other dreams that I have there mm -hmm. are other goals that I have mm -hmm. you know so I never really gave up you know science if I if I couldn't go to college and stay in school mm -hmm. and you know nowadays you can use the internet to educate yourself about anything yes. that you want to mm -hmm. you know right now as I sit here I feel like I'm illiterate like I don't know how to read why because I'm not trying to learn how to read English anymore. I'm actually trying to learn how to read Japanese because mm -hmm. I feel like all these little symbols, they don't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to learn. So I feel like I'm an illiterate person. Mm -hmm. But the adventure of trying to learn what these meanings are, it opens your mind to new things. Mm -hmm. It opens your mind to new cultures so that you don't feel so different. Yes. That you don't feel so hateful of strange things right you know I, I want this world to feel like we all just all just one people mm -hmm. there's no color difference there's no culture different i don't have to sit here and say i'm haitian all the time wave a flag and say this is me mm -hmm. you know i want to be a member of the human society mm -hmm. i want to be a person who is expressing myself for everyone not just for for being black Mm -hmm. or just representing one thing so i don't sit around and just represent sickle cell i hate the word sickler because yes. people use it as a thing that's that represents me mm -hmm. that does not represent me i'm not a little factory of sickling cells right i'm a person who is beyond all of those things yes. i feel like you know you have to empower yourself mm -hmm. in order to make it out here because a lot of people are very negative there are a lot of haters who will really put your spirit down yes and turn your you know self-hatred is a hard thing mm -hmm. you know so to have a disease to struggle through it and to have pain yet you hate yourself mm -hmm. your inner self mm -hmm. that's not a good thing so yeah. when I'm feeling hard pain if I am not in harmony with myself yes there's no overcoming that if you hate yourself absolutely so for me that's what mean that's why I paint. I paint to just share that part of myself with people. And I have to say, the paintings that I've seen, I've seen them being exhibited down at the uh, legislative office building. Mm -hmm. They are phenomenal. I mean, I think that redefined, 10 redefined, mm -hmm. that is so expressive in terms of, you know, you can't express pain with the numbers that they present us sometimes in the hospital, one to 10 because the pain is so much greater. And I've heard people talk about pain and, you know, what it meant to them. So I've heard people talk about pain, uh, like sickle cell pain being pain such as someone hitting you with a hammer continuously. Or women saying, if you've ever had a child, it's like being in labor and never bringing a child forth. It's, it's just a con constant pain or it's very acute pain. Um, but for young people, because I think it's so significant that here you are, a, a, an artist, a painter, and I've met so many people who are so creative and talented with sickle cell disease, there are a lot of young people coming. There's like over 200 already that we have identified, know that they're receiving services, and there's many more that may have gotten caught in some cracks somewhere. What would you say to those who might be listening today, those young people uh, who, who may be depressed or don't know how to um, live the life with sickle cell disease? The thing I wanna say to young people with living with sickle cell disease is that your life is valid. All your dreams are valid. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do. The thing is that your body has some limitations that you need to understand, there are certain limitations. Like, if I do this, I might get sick. You just have to understand the risk of that and still go on beyond your, your limitations and go towards your dreams because you only have on, only you. Do not listen to everybody else and what everybody else is saying about what you should be doing. You only have you. So encourage yourself to do certain things that, you know, that, that, that is positive, that makes you feel better about yourself. So I, I want to encourage young people just to feel that 
whatever they think in life, whatever they feel is valid. Mm -hmm. That validation is very important. Yes, it is. Now, on another note, for parents, what would you say to parents who have children uh, with sickle cell disease? I would have to say congratulations because you made the right choice of having a child, a wonderful child, a beautiful child. And you should love that child no matter what because you are a parent. And I would just say that your child is a beautiful child and your, your child can be as wonderful as any great person. And you have Martin Luther King, he could have been born with sickle cell. Mm -hmm. You know, you have great thinkers like Albert Einstein, he could have been born with sickle cell. So you have to think that, don't look at the disease, look at the beautiful creature, the nature of your child, look at the beauty that you express because that's part of you. You gave that life a, a purpose now. You can always encourage that child to be anything that they want to be, you know. So don't look at sickle cell as such a negative thing because sickle cell is actually an opportunity to learn compassion, to learn what pain is. Because when you know what pain is, you can actually love another person. That's, that was phenomenal. One more. What would you say to the community at large? Um, the thing about the community is, is that we as groups of people, sometimes we, are get, we get caught up in mundane things, just, just living through life and not coming together as a people, mm -hmm. you know, because our, our community sometimes it doesn't encourage us. We see darkness. Mm -hmm. We see people who are in bad shape or we live in low income areas. Poverty is around us. I've been homeless three times. I know what the streets are like. I understand there are certain things that happen in our community that are just negative, mm -hmm. you know. I just want to tell people that sickle cell is in our community, accept it. If we all came together, we could actually cure this thing. You have to understand that there is a lot of wealth in the black community. We have a lot of celebrities who are bling, bling, bling all over the place. You know, they buy cars for $2 million. Imagine what a $2 million gift to an organization like the SEDA could do for sickle cell. So you have to think that we can actually change this thing. We can actually change the message. We can actually give the young people who are growing up with this pain new hope to live and be healthy. Thank you so much. That, that, was, that was awesome. It couldn't have been said any better. We thank you so much for joining us today. We have to end now a uh, great conversation, and we'll have to do this again. Uh, this was a, a great beginning of just opening up some more ideas and images of what sickle cell disease is. So I'm Virginia Pratiller. I am uh, serving as Executive Director for Citizens for Quality Sickle Cell. We're located in Hartford and in New Britain. Our phone number is 860-223-7222. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know we went over. <laughs> <laughs>